In November 2017, in the German town of Bonn, a very special art exhibition is being held. The 250 works by artists include Picasso, Matisse, Monet and Franz Marc are being publicly displayed for the first time since they were seized during the World War II by the Nazis. The story of how these works of art ended up in this gallery begins in Munich in March 2012 with a raid on the flat of the 80-year-old recluse named Cornelius Gurlet. team that came into this flat and just was confronted with stacks of artworks everywhere. And if you sort of compare that modest apartment with the amount of works in it, that probably raised further suspicions and made them really go through them all and in the end confiscate them all. It was a big surprise because nobody expected it. It was a mixture of fascination and enthusiasm, but also uncertainty about what we are doing with the collection. It was fascinating standing in front of an artwork by Claude Monet of the Waterloo Bridge, knowing that no one had seen it for decades. I was really excited about the condition of the paintings and how they were restored, as there had been different reports about the conditions in which they were found. The story was broken by Focus magazine and captured the attention of the world. Now there's been a major discovery of more than a thousand pieces of art looted by the Nazis. Many of the works belong to Jews. The incredible treasure trove includes paintings which were looted or branded degenerate by the Nazis, as well as Hitler's own private collection. Whenever we deal with Nazi looted art, there usually is a story behind that that is quite interesting to people and that moves, that is emotional. Cezanne, Claude Monet and a lot of expressionists like Otto Dix and Kokoschka were found in the flat in Munich because that was the kind of art the father, Hildebrand Gurlitt, had specialised in. Later they found out that a second house existed in Salzburg where they found more paintings, the big names in art history, Renoir, Seignac and others. Cornelius inherited them from his mother um, who herself inherited them from Cornelius's father, Hildebrand Gerlitt. Hildebrand Gerlich was one of the four art dealers who had been assigned to sell degenerate art. Hildebrand Gerlich had always been interested in expressionist artworks and therefore he was mostly responsible for that period. What he couldn't sell after 1945, he just kept and no one ever asked him what he still owned. His really love just for these artworks. He didn't want to see them destroyed, so better bring them in his own hands or into other countries where they were appreciated still. He might have wanted to help people that he had known before when they were forced to sell their items in order to pay the taxes to flee the countries. But on the other hand, there is certainly a degree of him taking opportunities. So you can see that because after the war, he didn't always collaborate well with his old Jewish friends when they were looking for the pieces that they'd lost. Hildebrand Gertlet died in a car accident in 1956 and the collection fell into the hands of his son, Cornelius. So how did Cornelius manage to keep the collection secret for so long without raising suspicion? Two reasons. First of all, Cornelius Gerlit was really careful about how he dealt with them. There are stories from art dealers about how he once wanted to sell a painting and asked a neighbour if he could use her flat to present it, to sell it, so that the dealers wouldn't realise what else he owned. Secondly, Germany never really dealt with the question of what had happened to the inventory that the four art dealers had bought after 1945. Nobody thought that these artworks still existed. He was just the son of a larger-than-life father. He had the same job as his father, or at least he studied the same subject and he was obviously overpowered by it all, and then he decided to retreat from public life because, in a way, he was also unable to cope with life. 
The whole sort of story started with um, Cornelius being um, held up on a train from Switzerland and uh, carrying a certain amount at 9,000 euros, which was just below the what you can bring into um, Germany from Switzerland. And that raised suspicion. In September 2011, one year after the incident on the train, a search warrant was issued for Cornelius Gertlitz's apartment on the grounds of suspected tax evasion, but it was not implemented. Three months later, Cornelius sold a painting by Max Beckham called The Lion Tamer in order to pay for much needed health care. By selling this painting, Cornelius attracted attention to himself and started a process that would lead to his downfall. In February 28, 2012, government officials entered Cornelius's apartment and seized the entire collection. However, the conscientious issue of ownership of the paintings is still being hotly debated.